<laughs> Graham's Law, guys. Yesterday, we talked about the basic gas laws. We talked about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. Graham's Law is just a ratio, okay? Um, so diffusion, guys. What does diffusion mean? That's review from our last unit. Spreading out gas or Yes, part. It's, that's what happens is it spreads out, but but it's it's more than just that diffusion, mixing. So yes, the gases will spread out because that's what gases do. But really, guys, it's mixing. All right. Um, effusion then is similar. Small opening, right? So what we're talking about here, guys, is then we can figure out the rate of effusion or diffusion. Um, and what is, are they both based on? They're based on their masses, right? We had the analogy where in the Olympics, you don't see big 400-pound people running the sprints, okay? You see small people who are lean and slender. They're the ones who can run faster because they have less mass. It just makes sense, all right? Um, so what it is, we have the rate of our gas A over the rate of gas B equals the square root of... Notice it's the mass of gas B over the mass of gas A. So whatever one you have first, guys, you've just got to remember, hey, the masses are flipped. It's the inverse, all right? It's the inverse, and that's why they're going to be flipped, and it's the square root. All right, so this isn't something, again, I don't know if you're going to see this on your readings exam. I want to give you as much information as possible, but this is super easy, okay? It's an inverse relationship. And then it's the square root. So you're looking at the masses of that. So let's do an example or two. All right. Example says, compare the rates of effusion of hydrogen and oxygen at STP. So does it give us a specific ratio we're looking for? Is it one, to the, one gas to the other? No. No, right? It just says hydrogen and oxygen. So typically, guys, I'm going to call this, the first one, my gas A. And, excuse me, the second one, my gas B. So... To get this rate, we want, um, if we look back here, the rate of gas A to the rate of gas B. So rate A over rate B equals the square root of mass B over mass A. So I'm going to call A equals oxygen, I'm sorry, hydrogen, we said. What's the mass of hydrogen? It's about two, right? Like 2.016. We'll just we'll call it two for the sake of time. Why is it two? Because uh, hydrogen is a what? Brinkelhoff. What does Brinkelhoff mean? Diatomic. Good. It's a little review there. Oxygen's mass is what? Is it? 32. Again, it's a Brinkelhoff as well. I, I thought I tripped you guys up with hydrogen. Um, you got that one, and then oxygen got you. But, yes, guys, if they're Brinkelhoffs, remember, they exist in the natural state at STP as gases, as diatomics. All right? So you've got to remember that when we're dealing with mass, which we are here. So mass B is 32 over 2. So that's going to be the square root of, we simplify that, 16 over 1, which is just the square root of 16, which equals 4. So the answer, guys, you've got to take it one step further. You can't just put 4 down. What we would say is that hydrogen um, effuses four times faster than oxygen, right? So you're writing a sentence to kind of explain it. You've got to define which one is that many times faster than the other one, okay? And it was effusion here because it set it up in the problem. Is that really that bad? No, it's not too bad at all. I want you guys to try the next one and then go back and do number six on your homework from last night. Uh, 38. 38, right, because it's multiplied by two. Chlorine is going to be about 70.9-ish, all right? So when we go ahead and do this, it's going to be the rate of A over the rate of B equals the mass of B. So 70.9 over 38. This one is not so much mental math. Uh, make sure you do the division first and then the square root. What do you get for an answer? Yeah, so 1.36. Now, again, we're going to write a little statement. So we're going to say that F2 effuses 1.36 times faster than Cl2. 
Right, so that's a great question. Let's say you defined it as chlorine being A. So I'm going to do it up here in red. Chlorine is A, and then B would be fluorine. So obviously, guys, that's going to change up our math, isn't it? So it would be then 38 over 70.9. Somebody do that math. Or Tony, what did you get for your math there? Points. 736. Okay, so 736. So what you could say here is that you would just do the same thing. Chlorine effuses 0.736 times faster than fluorine. Now, when it's less than 1, is it really faster? No, I mean, you could still say faster, but anything less than 1 is going to actually be slower, right? So that should make sense that, hey, if you're above one, that means the ratio, whatever the way that you wrote it, is going to be faster. And then even if you write it as faster here, if it's less than one, it really means that it's slower. Okay? You could just take the inverse of it as well if you wanted to, to kind of flip it to have a bigger number. Either way, it's the same thing. It's the same ratio. It's just kind of your perspective of how you're looking at it. That's a good question, though. If in the problem, though, they say fluorine to chlorine, You've got to make sure that fluorine is A and chlorine is B, okay? But it kind of just depends on how it's worded, so make sure you answer the question that they're asking you for. Just think of other ratios that we've seen this year. Guys, any questions with Graham's Law? Easy? Straightforward? All right, let's now continue and talk about the ideal gas law, all right? So what page is this in your notes? This is page five in your notes. Guys, this is a huge equation that is you is very very useful okay um, we're going to use this or a version of this on our lab this week when we look at the molar mass for butane which is in um, lighters uh, it's the lighter fluid in, in lighters um, so so when you're not at STP when we do some gas stoichiometry which we're going to get into tomorrow um, when we're at STP, it's super easy. When we're not at STP, this is the formula we have to use. PV equals NRT. P, we know is pressure. V, we know is um, volume. T, again, what does T always have to be in? Kelvin. N is in moles. And then here, guys, is our R. It's a constant. What I want you to do in your reference packet, on the very first page of your reference packet, I want you to write this R value in, and I also want you to write this equation in. Not super difficult to use because it's the same basic algebra that we have been doing for the last couple of days and a lot this year. You're going to be given certain pieces. You've got to solve for the unknown. All right, the hardest part, and it's not super hard, guys, if you've been doing it all year long, it's going to be easy, is um, being organized. Taking out the pieces that you're given, identifying what you're looking for, and looking at your units. Your units are going to help you out tremendously. So here we go. Let's try this problem. What's the pressure exerted by a 12-gram sample of nitrogen gas in a 10-liter container at 25 degrees Celsius? Talk to me. What do we have to work with here? All right. So we've got a – and that's a mass, right? So we have a mass of 12 grams of nitrogen gas. What's my symbol for nitrogen gas? N2, right, because it's part of Brinkelhoff. It's diatomic. What else am I given? Volume, Volume right? Volume equals 10.0 liters. Yes, that point zero matters because why? It's sig figs, right? So it's adding to our sig figs. What else am I given? Temperature. Ooh, what should I do to that temperature right away? Yeah, just do it right there, guys. You're going to find that 298 is a common temperature. That's about room temperature-ish. What else am I given from this wording? Yeah, what we want to know. So we want to know the pressure. That's just as important as um, the other information. So if you think about yesterday, guys, we're looking for the pressure, but yesterday all of our problems had how many sets of data? Two, right? You had V1, P1, and T1, and then you had P2, V2, and T2. But we don't have any secondary conditions here. As soon as you realize and see that you don't have a second condition, you're using P2 
PB equals nRT. So if we, I, once we identify that we have to use the ideal gas law, do I have all the pieces? Was I given all the pieces in this problem? Alex, you're shaking your head yes. I have an N there. I have an R there. Well, what is R? It's a constant. So, yeah, we kind of are. We have to look on our reference table that we added it in. What's our R value? Now, notice, guys, what's inherent about your pressure unit here. What's your pressure unit going to be that we look for? Atmosphere. Atmospheres, right? Because you have atmospheres here in, excuse me, in your um, constant. So that means your pressure has to be in atmospheres or, now there are other constants. I'm only going to show you this one. Um, just look at your units if they give you something different. What about N? I don't see an N listed over here to the left. Ah, we have grams, though, which then can get us to moles. So how do we go from 12.0 grams of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen? Grams right there, one mole, just like that. Where do I get the, what's the molar mass of nitrogen? No. Why is it 28? You got to double it, right, because it's N2. So it's going to be that 28. 0 0.02, all right? So just remember that, that you've got to, if you have a brinkle off, you're doubling it. So 12 divided by 28 equals what? Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. 428 moles. And remember, wait until the very end of the problem to round, go out three or four decimal places like we did here, okay? So we have N, we have V, we have T, we have R. We're looking for P. Now it's just plug and chug, guys. Solve for your unknown. We're going to divide by V from both sides. P equals NRT over V. Now we just plug it all in. 0 0.428 moles times 0 0.0821 latum over mulk times... 298K. I apologize that I ran out of space. Kelvin's gone. Moles are gone. On the bottom is going to be liters. 10.0 liters. Those are going to be canceled out. So we're left with atmospheres. How many sig figs am I going to report my answer to? Three, right? They all have three in there. So do the math. 0.428 times 0 0.0821 times 298 divided by 10. What is our pressure? Bueller, Bueller, Tony. One point oh five, rounding to sig figs. I believe that, that is correct. Anybody else get that? Yeah, absolutely. 